Hello friends, in the last lessons we learned what is refraction and why refraction occurs. In this lesson we shall learn about rules of refraction. Have you ever seen someone catching fish with spear? That's how people used to catch fish in the old days. That not only requires a good aim, it also needs signs. Because the light ray coming from fish inside the water to our eyes outside water deflects because of refraction. It causes formation of an image in the water, an illusion of the fish. The real fish is slightly somewhere else, but it appears shallower. But these hunters can guess the real position of fish. Let's learn the science behind it. The refraction of light follows certain rules. Let I be the angle made by the incident ray, that is the light coming from the object, with the normal, we call this angle of incidence. Let R be the angle made by the refracted ray, that is the light coming towards our eyes with the normal. We call this angle of refraction. The incident ray, the refracted ray and the normal all lie in the same plane. This is the first rule of refraction. In trigonometry, we have learned for a right angle triangle with angle A, sine of angle A is equal to length of perpendicular divided by length of hypotenuse. Right? Let us look at the second law of refraction. For the light of a given color and a, for the given pair of mediums, the ratio of sine of angle of incidence to the sine of angle of refraction is a constant. This law is known as Snell's law of refraction. This means sin i to sin r is equal to constant. This constant is called refractive index of the second medium with respect to the first medium. We know from trigonometry if angle decreases, sin of the angle also decreases because length of perpendicular decreases. Right? So this ratio of sin i to sin r is constant means if angle of incidence i reduces, sin i reduces, then sin r will also reduce because ratio is constant and that also means angle of refraction will also reduce and vice versa for the increase. Sin i increases, sin r also increases. The extent of the change in the direction of light for a given pair of medium can be easily obtained from the refractive index. How? In our earlier lesson, we have learned that refraction is caused by the change of speed of light while changing the medium. This means refractive index should be dependent on the speed too. Light travels fastest in vacuum with the highest speed of 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second. It slows down a little bit in air and with more denser mediums like glass or diamond, it slows down further. It means light travels through glass slower than it travels in vacuum. That is the speed of light within glass is less lesser than the speed of light in vacuum, which is 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second. Say light was traveling through medium 1 at speed v1. Then it enters medium 2 and its speed changes to V2. The refractive index of medium 2 with respect to medium 1 is also given by the ratio of the speed of light in medium 1 to the speed of light in medium 2. This is usually represented by the symbol N21 that is refractive index of medium 2 with respect to 1. So N21 is equal to V1 by V2. Speed of light in medium 1 to speed of light in medium 2. And vice versa, the refractive index of medium 1 with respect to medium 2 is represented as N12, which is equal to speed of light in medium 2, that is V2, divided by speed of light in medium 1, that is V1. So N12 is equal to V2 by V1. 
it would be hard to remember refractive index of every pair of medium so we calculate refractive index of a medium with respect to vacuum and call it absolute refractive index of the medium if c is the speed of light in vacuum and v is the speed of light in a given medium then the absolute refractive index of the medium nm is equal to c by v that is the speed of light in vacuum which is 3 into 10 to the power 8 divided by speed of light in a given medium we will learn more about refractive index in the next video bye bye